The second thing I wanted to touch on really is to look forward, although now not uh, that far forward, to the start of COP26 uh, in Glasgow in just, what, six days time now. I'm here in Glasgow today. I will be probably increasingly uh, in Glasgow over the next uh, three weeks as COP starts and it uh, progresses. It's a big, big moment for the world. Um, it's a big moment, obviously, for Scotland and for Glasgow. There's you know, for people who live in the city, people who commute in and out of the city for work reasons, I think it's important to recognise the next two uh, to three weeks is going to bring quite a significant degree of disruption. And I suspect not everybody who lives in the city will enjoy uh, the experience. Um, but it is a really important moment, an important event. You know, hyperbole is uh, always easy to fall into when talking about events like this. But I think in this instance, it's not an exaggeration to say it's probably the last real chance the world has to avert climate catastrophe um, down the line. Uh, I think whether or not it's a success in terms of that outcome is really in the balance. I don't think success is guaranteed. Uh, there are too many uh, bigger and big polluting countries that haven't yet stepped up sufficiently to make the kind of commitments that are necessary to ensure that collectively the world is cutting emissions sufficiently over the next few years, certainly over the rest of this decade, to keep that vital objective of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees alive. Um, and there's going to need to be a lot of work over the period of COP to make sure uh, that we see uh, those who need to step up to the plate. Uh, from Scotland's perspective, we're a small country, but we are uh, and are seen to be a world leader in terms of climate policy. We've decarbonised faster than, I think, any G20 country in the last few years. We've got some of the uh, most ambitious, but also the toughest uh, climate change targets for the future of, of any country in the world. But we still have more to do ourselves. We need to meet those targets, not just set them. Uh, we've had huge success in decarbonising electricity. We've got to see the same now around uh, heating our homes and transport. And we've got to continue to be a voice as we have been in the past for climate justice, um, making sure that the global south, the developing world uh, more generally uh, gets the support in terms of climate finance, uh, but also the broader understanding of the challenges being faced. And I think we can play a part in that uh, over uh, the period of COP and beyond. Um, obviously, I know that many of you and uh, the organisations you represent will be uh, planning activity over the, the period of COP, and I think that's really important that uh, the voice of faith and interfaith communities are, are heard loudly and clearly. Um, I know this year's Scottish Interfaith Week, uh, which coincides with COP, is focusing on climate awareness, which is good. Uh, we've got initiatives like the Glasgow Multi-Faith Declaration calling on world leaders to deliver the outcome that needs to be uh, achieved. Uh, there's the interfaith vigil uh, organised for George Square. Um, and I know a lot of faith communities are opening up their homes uh, to accommodate international visitors. So all of that, I think, is really important. And I want to thank you for it. Um, there's a whole ro load of other issues I could touch on, but in the interest of time today, I'm not going to. Uh, suffice to say uh, that I really value these summits, but I value them because they're an opportunity to reflect on the broader uh, and wider and deeper work that the interfaith community does. And, and it is that that I value more than anything. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for all the work that you're doing and will continue to do. And we look forward to working uh, very closely with you.